All right, I got a bunch of um, these twin control cylinders in uh, from Norway. They are, I'm pretty sure they're the same thing as like the, the Combi, the NASA Twin Combi 5800. Um, I'm not sure if there's something a little bit different. We'll take a look in after picking it and got it. Um, so I got four of those in, uh, two different biddings. So these two go together and these two go together. I'm guessing it's like interior, exterior. This one was really um, kind of uh, messed up, like uh, not messed up, but just like there is a like a plastic, plasticized coating on these, and that one had just been really old, and this whole front was white and like falling off. You can start to see the effects of it on here, or starting to fall off, and you can see that the the brass underneath is getting tarnished, right? Um, and these two were brand new. But you can see there's there's still some tarnishing even on the brand new ones. I don't know why this one doesn't didn't come with a, a cover. They're pretty cool because you can gut them by um, unscrewing that one flathead screw there, and then ungut and then gut it through the the top holes here. Um, which I don't know. I've never tried it. Uh, but what I did is I I soaked the face of this in some um, what do you call it? acetone, and that took the the plastic finish right off. And then I took some brasso. It could use some more work, but I took some brasso and made it uh, a little bit cleaned up. But you can see it looks quite different color-wise. Um, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but they do look quite different color-wise in person. Anyways, um, you can see I picked a number of these. I'll go ahead and, I don't know, this one looks kind of cool. I like the little holes in it. Uh, I don't I don't know if the if one's for the interior, one's for the exterior. I'm not sure. But we'll go ahead and lock this one up. Oh, I got a Ruko. Triton 401 sitting here. It's only got two side pins in it. That's pretty fun too. Um, so for this guy, um, like the twin combi, uh, the twin control has six top pins with uh, barrel spool drivers and matched counter milling on the plug. Um, and on top of that, it has five side pins on the left. And these side pins, they need to be lifted to the proper, um, sorry, I'm getting the focus over to the right spot here. They need to be lifted to the proper shear line and they need to be um, rotated. So put it on manual focus so it doesn't keep shooting all over the place when I'm picking. Uh, and on top of that, for rotational, um, there is um, serrations that go vertical on those, on those side pins. So if you're putting any sort of tension on it, it'll push it into the sidebar, which also has matching serrations, which will make those uh, those side pins pretty much impossible to rotate. So uh, we'll go ahead and try to pick this guy, and I brought the wrong tensioner. So what I'll do is I'll pause and I'll come back with the right tensioner. All right, I grabbed some tensioners, which was good. I got these Sparrows knurled flat bars. It was good because uh, I realized I also left the keys up there. So one of these keys, or some of these keys go to this lock. There we go. And the key, you can see it's got a sidebar down here, and that's what lifts and rotates those side pins. And then on top, it's got like these grooved peaks there, I guess for the pin to drop down. I don't think it has these uh, double peaked pins. I think the Triton does. Um, I don't think these do. I haven't pulled the pins out, so I don't know for sure. All right, try this Red Sparrows. Well, it's red, just um, they don't come with these on these. These are my markings. So white's the thinnest, then blue, then red, then black's the thickest one. All right, so we got some tension there. I got this Jimmy Long's deep hook that I'm going to use for the uh, key pins or, and the uh, barrel drivers. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to really keep track of which pin I'm on. Uh, I'm just going to kind of push up on them. And they're gonna, they might act like tapers at first. Um, and you see how this springy, so if you encounter a springy pin, you don't push on it, okay? If you encounter one that's not moving, that's the one you push on, that's your binder. Um, so this one, hard to demonstrate while letting go, but yeah, springy there. And I don't really keep track of which pin I'm on or how many times it's clicked. Like you could say, first click, it's dropping into the uh, counter milling, second click, it's the second uh, serration on the counter milling, and then third click, it's set, um, but 
no doubt while you're picking you're probably going to drop some pins down one serration two serrations or uh, completely you know and, and then your counting is going to be for nothing um, so if you can pick it with counting that's that's pretty crazy in and of itself all right this is coming off this is the mic for the uh, inside all right let's start again <laughs> I did a lot of talking I'm kind of out of breath already all right um, so I'll start on the first pin and the first pin it's a little harder to detect the um, the uh, the jiggle or the, or the springiness so sometimes I'll bring my thumb down and I'll push like this and I can feel that it's springy um, just from the the weight of the pick on here sometimes we can't it's hard to detect all right second pin uh, got some click as I lifted that up and now it's springy so it probably made its way up into the counter milling or something like that third one I got a click and I got a little spring out of it um, fourth one springy fifth one springy and the sixth one um, doesn't seem to be springy at all make sure I'm actually on the pin yeah it doesn't seem to be springy at all but it does feel like it's overset okay so I heard it kind of maybe you heard it too kind of grind up there and that is uh, often indicative of, of an overset so we'll just start over and the first why do I have such a hard time getting under the second one all right second one went up into something let's double check this first one again springy springy second one third one okay I got a click and it's springy now fourth one a little bit hard to get under springy already fifth one very springy and the sixth one gave me a little click as I want to slide under it and since I overset before I'm gonna leave that guy alone uh, maybe I just can't judge its feedback very well all the way back there all right this first one again springy where's the second chamber all right click out of the second chamber now springy third chamber all right moved up quite a bit I think that might have been the second chamber actually <laughs> again like it doesn't matter which pin you're on just do your little jiggle test and if it's not moving it needs to be pushed if it's moving leave it alone go on to the next pin it doesn't really matter which pin you're on all right so five went up and is now up high all right six I can feel jiggle like this when it's sitting flat it doesn't jiggle at all so this this pick is probably too high to give me an accurate jiggle test on six unless I do it manually like that all right pin one is tough because it's way up front here but it feels like it's jiggling two is definitely jiggling uh, three is jiggling okay got a click sliding into the sliding past four into five and five's jiggling go back to front again so it's, it's just keep repeating this process until like you see two doesn't seem to be jiggling anymore so two must have to go up a little more just got two little clicks out of it still not moving so make sure I'm actually on two it's moving if I lift it like that so it could have been the pick angle getting caught up in the wording that stopped it from jiggling so there's all kinds of reason now I can see two when I do it the other way four just caused a little bit of plug rotation when I pushed on it five four five six go back to the beginning again I, I'm probably almost done uh, playing with the, the barrels the plug has rotated a decent amount I might start seeing if the sidebar is workable yet and then uh, set any last plugs uh, barrels that I need to set after just got a little bit more plug movement after touching one there two this seems to be jiggling three seems to be jiggling four jiggling five jiggling six jiggling one last check up one and two 
one is really hard to test. I don't seem to be feeling anything jiggling on one. Let me see if I can actually get on pin one. Not sure if I'm even on it. But, all right. I'll grab this uh, multi pick number 10. And what we'll do is we'll start feeling these, um, if any of these side ones are binding. So, number one seems to be loose. Is it going to bind rotationally? Like, so if I let off the tension a bit and push and pull on it, do I hear them clicking? No. One is not clicking. Two is not clicking front or back. Three is not. Four is not. Is four binding up and down? It seems to be. All right, let me let off tension a bit more and see if I can rotate four. Yep. All right. Did you hear that click? That's four being pulled forward. And I kind of slid off stuff there. Let's start from the beginning again. One, two, three. So four is the one we're playing with. There, you hear it clicking back. And then what you want to do is you want to lift it. And if you can lift it all the way up and it binds all the way up, then you probably have the wrong rotation. But if you can lick it, lift it to a point um, where it seems to get stuck, but you let off and it springs down a little bit and it just moves a little bit, but you feel spring on it, then you're probably got the right rotation and the right height. If you go all the way up and it's stuck, um, and it was binding all the way up and when you push it it's hard but there's no uh, small springiness area you probably don't have the right rotation you gotta let off your tension a bit let it drop down and then try a different rotation and lift it up again um, I don't know if there's a better way other than that kind of trial and error uh, but that's uh, pretty much the uh, method I go about now for this particular one I'm pretty sure I know what the rotations are so it'll speed up the process a decent amount by not having to iterate too many times through the process. All right, so one, two, three are all springy. Four is binding. I just don't know what the bind order is. I, I haven't, it's not like I've picked these like crazy. Um, and five I can't find. So I do have another pick that I like, I didn't bring down with me. That's a um, honest dong sheet pick that can lift a bit higher than this and I can feel the back ones better with it. This this one I have a really, it's got this thin shaft that's very flexible. It's very hard for me to feel the, the back uh, two side pins with this, this uh, multi-pick. And definitely multi-pick are kind of, kind of the gold standard in, in these flag pick, dimple flag picks. But that said, um, you know, every flag has its pros and cons and and with these multi picks it's that that thin shaft helps you get into a lot of locks but it's it's just too flexible and also the um the handle's too narrow in my opinion it, it, it needs to be a bit fatter um, so you can feel the feedback better this is just a little bit too thin for my liking so one nothing two nothing it's just springy three three's just springy Four feels like it's set. It's got that springy quality, but then it stops. And five, five I can barely feel with this pick. One, two, three. So I barely feel like four's getting set, so I'm thinking that uh, not enough work has been done on the barrels yet. So let's go back to the barrels again. So pin one. Feeling if I'm on pin, I can't see very well. All right, I think pin one is jiggling. Can't see that I'm actually on pin one. I don't know why I have such a hard time getting under pin two. Getting no bounce there. Got two clicks out, it's still no bounce there. Another click, and now I get my my spring out of it. Right, so two had fallen apparently. Three is definitely springy. Four click and springy now. That must be six that I'm going under there. Five. Five seems springy. Four springy. Three, two, and one. So I think. 
Just double checking one more time. Three, four, five. Everything feels set, so it's gotta be the side pins. All right, number one, springy. Two, springy. Three, springy. Four, binding. Rotation and lift. All right, I felt some uh, plug rotation and four now feels set. Five. All right, I felt some more plug rotation and I can't really tell if it's set because again, I can't really feel those back ones. One is nothing other than holding my pick and holding my pick hostage. Two, can't set rotation. Three, three, maybe you can set rotation. I, okay, I felt some more plug rotation and it feels set. Come back to the beginning. One, okay, I can set rotation on one now, but not the height. Two. Can't really tell. Oh, two is binding up and down though. And it feels set. Come back to one again. Is binding up and down and we're open. Okay, so um, you see, uh, it's not my fastest pick on these, but I wanted to illustrate going back and forth between the barrels and the side pins and what you're doing and feeling for on all of them. Hopefully that helped a little. We'll go ahead and take a look inside. I haven't gutted these yet, so I can't really tell you what's inside, but we'll turn on the autofocus. Oh, what is that? That's the stabilization. There's a the focus. Bring it into the middle. All right, get some gutting tools. And like I said, you can take this flathead out and then empty everything through the top. It's got that sticker on there. Go ahead and see that we're open right there. We'll lock it back up. There we go. And now we're locked. So go ahead and remove this clip off the back. Some various hardware there. And now, um, Pretty easy. The uh, the key will hold all the side pins in place. Um, as long as you have the key pins up, you don't have to worry about those falling out. The only thing you're gonna have to worry about is the sidebar ejecting out this left side. So you want to have your your thumb there to hold that. So follower, we'll go in like this, I guess. And you can see there's the sidebar. That's the guy you got to catch with your thumb. All right. Put this guy up here. All right, first the sidebar. Nothing special about this sidebar. It's just a, um, it's just like that. Well, there is something special actually. So the way the sidebar works is, do I have a pick? The, um, the side pins, they have to drop down into these channels here. Okay, so there's like a bar that has to drop down in there. But the sides of these have these little serrations here and that's gonna catch the serrations to stop the pins from rotating. Okay, so there, I don't know if you can see it there, but there's a little serration there on the edge of each of these. And that's gonna stop those from rotating. Uh, one of the sidebar springs there. Grab the other one out. Both sidebar springs. And the sidebar springs are going to push it into a groove that's in the edge of the, you see that groove at the bottom? It's going to push it into there, and that's going to try to center the plug inside there. Um, and that's what gives you built-in counter rotation, especially useful if this had uh, gins instead of barrels on top. Um, so what we'll do is we'll get rid of the um, key pins first. And I'm curious to see if they have any special shape. I don't think they do. They do not. So nothing special there. Six. Five, four, three, two, one. There's our key pins. Flip them around the right way. And then we'll take a look at the um, side pins. So as you pull the key out, you see the key there is blocking these from coming out. You see that first one starting to pop up and boom, popped all the way out. It's got a spring behind it right there. I'll put the key pin, uh, the sidebar pins up there. So. 
on these pins, you can see hopefully that there's serrations that run up and down, and that's what catches in that sidebar and stops the rotation. And you can see how there's these cuts with a, a bar in the middle. That bar is what has to fall into the gap of the sidebar. So you gotta get that lined up face on and then drop into uh, the sidebar. So there's our sidebar. And this thing has to drop in like that. So if it's angled, it can't drop in. If it's straight on, it can drop in there like that. And those serrations do a really good job at stopping you from being able to rotate those um, side pins. All right, so second one, oh, this is a pin four actually, so let's move it down here. And just because I'm anal, I'll move the spring to number five. Um, so there's number four, three, two, and one. Probably my hand has been probably in the way the whole time. And then all that's left is to drop out spring three. Put my hand in the way a little bit. Spring one and spring two. All right, so there's the side work. Look at the plug a little. On top, there are serrations in here. You can see um, there are two per chamber, two of these thin serrations, okay? That means that this one is set up for barrel spool uh, drivers. If it had one wide, thick um, counter milling, then that would be for gins. But since this has two counter millings that are thin, it's meant to get the, catch the thin lip that's present on the, uh, the barrel, barrel spools. And it looks like there's some drill protection on there as well. All right, so on to the Bible. First one here, and the barrels are double-sided. You can see they have a thin lip top and bottom, and that's what catches on that uh, counter milling. So there's number one, two, three, and the springs aren't long enough to pop into the chamber for me just to grab, so I'll just dump them at the end. I hope they're all the same. I can't imagine why they'd be different, but I'll see if as they're falling out. No, they look the same. So I'll just dump them. I don't know if that's all of them. I hate when springs get stuck together like that. All right, one, two. That looks like all of them. They're set stuck together. Get that out. Get these out of my hand. And then if you get the springs stuck together like this, you can just unscrew them from each other, right? Don't go crazy on them. And that's all we got, really. So that is the Asa Twin Control uh, Trio Ving, right? Trio Ving tw Twin Control. Pretty sure it's just owned by Asa, like everything. Else. It's got a little bow widen uh, patent stamp on there. But that's it. Thank you. Bye.